Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture on urethra. So in the urethra, there are many topics, but first I would like to start with urethral injury. I'll write in my next page. Okay, let us start a new new topic today on urethral injury. Okay, so the urethral injury can be divided into two types based on the site of injury. So this is prostatic urethra, membranous urethra, this is bulbar urethra, penile urethra and then there is fossa navicularis. Yeah, so this is the urethra. So this is prostatic urethra, I'll just, yeah, this is the prostate. So this is prostatic urethra and this is membranous urethra. And this is bulbar urethra. So these are the main parts of the urethra. And this is penile urethra, fossa navicularis. Navicularis, okay. The urethra can be divided, the injury to the urethra can be divided into two types based on the site of rupture. If there is rupture in the membranous urethra, there can be rupture in the membranous urethra at the level of membranous urethra number one or there can be rupture at the level of bulbar urethra. So, that is the first classification and sometimes the rupture can be complete rupture or sometimes it can be incomplete rupture that is second classification and depending on the thickness of urethra it can be total the urethra can become same the complete or incomplete it is similar to complete or incomplete rupture so there are mainly two classifications one based on the site the urethral injury can be at membranous urethra or it can be at bulbar urethra or there can be complete rupture or partial rupture now if the rupture is in membranous urethra rupture of membranous urethra then what do you do if there is rupture rupture can occur in the membranous urethra so rupture is somewhere here okay now if there is rupture in the membranous urethra what are the causes of rupture in the membranous urethra one whenever there is pelvic fractures that can cause rupture in the membranous urethra two penetrating wounds can also cause rupture in the pelvic urethra, membranous urethra so what are the main causes one it can be pelvic causes or penetrating wounds they can cause rupture of the membranous urethra okay whenever there is uh, uh, the see if this is the prostate this is attached this is the pubic bone think that this is the pubic bone and the prostate is attached to the pubic bone by a ligament which is called as puboprostatic ligament whenever there is a pelvic fracture this puboprostatic ligament may get disrupted and thus the prostate which is there uh, there the pubic puboprostatic ligament is disrupted and also there is an injury in the membranous urethra so if you see the prostate which is there so this prostate has no connection it has no connection with the um, pure prostatic ligament and there is also no connection with the urethra so this type of prostate which we have is called has floating prostate now so this is called has vermont uh, sorry vermutan sign this is called has vermutan sign okay so uh, so this is about the rupture of membranous urethra. So what are the grades? The rupture of membranous urethra can be graded by a classification called as maculum cola pinto classification. So according to maculum cola pinto classification, the urethral injury it is divided into three types. One, in the first type of urethral injury, so this is the prostate, the the prostatic urethra which is there, this has been elongated. So this is mainly the posterior urethral injury. So prostate which is there, so this has been elongated. The prostatic urethra has been elongated. In second type, the prostate is plucked off completely 
from the membranous urethra. In third type, and there is extra visation of urethra above the sphincter, and this is the floating prostate. And now, the third type, there is total disruption of the urethra. Not only here, not only the membranous urethra, but total disruption of the urethra. And as a result, there are two things. One, there is ex here, here if you see, the urine which is formed, that is extravasated only above the sphincter. Not below the sphincter, okay? It is extravasated only above the sphincter. Here there will be the sphincter. It is mostly extravasated above the sphincter. But here, there is complete disruption, total disruption of urethra. So, as a result, there is extravasation above the sphincter and also there is extravasation below the sphincter. So, this is of three classifications, which are three grades which can be seen in maculum cola onto classification. In first, there is just elongation of prostatic urethra. The prostatic urethra is just elongated into the prostatic urethra. It is plucked off from the membranous urethra. The uh, extra vasation of urine is just above the sphincter. Now in 3, the prostatic urethra, uh, not only the urethra, the total urethra is disrupted. As a result, there is uh, extra vasation of urine above the sphincter and also below the sphincter. This is maculum, cola, pinta classification. Pinto classification. Now, what are the clinical features? The clinical features is there is blood in the external meatus. Here, the whole blood because, you know, if you see there is rupture, so there is blood. So, there is hemorrhage. If there is ongoing hemorrhage, this can lead to shock. This can lead to tachycardia. This can also lead to paler. Okay. Then, there is failure or difficulty in passing urine because the um, uh, Injury is above the sphincter, so as a result, there is failure and difficulty in passing urine. And you can also see extra vasation of urine into the perineum and abdominal wall. If you see on per rectal examination, you will see the so-called floating prostate, which is called as Vermutan sign. Okay, so these are the clinical features which you see. One, there is blood in the external meatus. Two, there is a floating, uh, I mean, urine, floating prostate, and three, there is urine extravasation. These are the main three important features. Because of hemorrhage, there can be shock, tachycardia, there can be pallor also. Then, how are you going to investigate it? Investigations, you can do x ray pelvis or abdomen. Ultrasound abdomen can be done. But if you ask me the best investigation, that is seeing the site of Tear, tear that is through urethrogram. Through urethrogram, you can see the site and type of tear. Okay. Now, how are you going to treat it? Treatment, if it is complete urethral rupture, think that there is complete urethral rupture here. So, if this is the thing, so urethra which is there, it has been completely ruptured. So, now what we do is we pass a catheter. We'll always try to first we we will try to pass a metal catheter which is from below upwards. If we are able to pass a metal catheter, then that's okay. If you are not able to pass metal catheter, then what we do is we will open the bladder. So if this is the bladder, so we open the bladder and from the bladder we pass a metal bogey which will uh, pass till here and then from below you will pass a metal catheter you know a guide wire first first you will pass a metal cath metal guide wire and from, from with the help of this guide wire you will pass a rubber catheter and then you will remove the bogey on both the sides and you will place the rubber catheter in place like this for several days so that where once you put the rubber catheter in place so this rubber catheter will uh, prevent the stenosis stricture formation and it will help in the wound uh, of the injury around it so as a result there is lumen which is left after removal of the rubber catheter so that is the main principle which is involved in um, urethral, uh, urethral injury so this is about membranous uh, injury to membranous urethra. Now, what about the injury to bulbar urethra? So, whenever there is injury to bulbar urethra, this occurs whenever there is inflammation to the perineum. Sorry, injury to the perineum. Any type of injury to the perineum may cause bulbar urethral injury. Bulbar 
urethral injury so when do we have bulbar urethral injury whenever there is injury to the uh, blow injury or blow to the perineum then there is a chance of bulbar urethral injury so this is the bladder this is the urethra and this is the thing which we have okay now this is the prostatic urethra this is the membranous urethra now the injury is here somewhere here okay in the bulbar urethra now because of the bulbar urethra clinically here if there is uh, if the injury is in the membranous urethra there is extra vestition of urine because along with the membranous urethra even the sphincters have been lost but now the injury is below the sphincters this is the sphincter so the injury is below the sphincter as a result there is no extra vestition of urine but there is retention of urine there is retention of urine why because this sphincter is closed it will not allow the urine to come out okay so there is retention of urine and because of this uh, uh injury there is formation uh, extra vasation of blood so there is hematoma formation and sometimes you can even see the bleeding from the external meatus sometimes you can even see bleeding from external meatus okay see the, so these are the things which you see okay then how are you going to manage it treatment first and foremost relieve the bladder pressure because if there is extra fluid or urine in the bladder this can cause black back pressure to the kidney so as a result first and foremost remove the bladder pressure by using suprapubic catheterization the catheter used is malacott catheter oh, sorry uh, we do we use i don't remember yeah we do supra supra uh, percutaneous suprapubic aspiration should be done okay in order to relieve the fluid which is present uh in the to relieve the obstruct to, to relieve the pressure overload so this fluid should be extra it should be drained okay next uh the other treatment first first and foremost whenever a person comes to you with bulbar injury if you suspect bulbar injury then never never or never never ask the person to pass urine never try to pass urine advise them never pass urine because if he passes urine the urine will come down and extra vesicate in the perineum so as a result never ask him to pass the urine you have to take him to the urinary ot operation theater and first one attempt of passing the catheter should be done at least in one attempt you'll have to pass the catheter if we cannot pass the catheter then through the perineal incision if this is the perineal through the perineal incision you will approach and you will suture this edges the you know ruptured bulbar urethra this ruptured part is sutured and then foley's catheter is put okay what do you do first you will take to operation theater first you will make an attempt to pass the catheter if you are not able to pass the catheter that is the attempt to pass the catheter is failed then you will give general anesthesia and then you will put the person on lithotomy position and then you will do percutaneous uh, so suprapubic cystotomy that is one second you will also make a perineal incision and then you will approach the bulbar urethra you will suture the bulbar urethra the uh, injured part of the bulbar urethra and then you will put a foley's catheter and then drain it and you leave leave the leave the catheter over there so this is how you are going to treat <coughs> bulbar urethral injury so what are the complications the complications are one stricture formation can be there number one because of the uh, urethral injury there can be formation of strictures that is one number two there can be urinary incontinence because the external sphincter sometimes if you see the external sphincter which is there this external sphincter may be destroyed sometimes this external sphincter is destroyed so because of this destroying went of the destroying uh, destruction of this external sphincter the urine control is lost as a result there may be urinary incontinence sometimes there can be impotence why because this is due to the damage of perineal nerve 
so because of that there can be impotence sometimes there can be extravasation of urine so these are the complications of urethral injury so i think you guys have understood about the urethral injury at least something about urethral injury so thank you guys for watching my lecture if you have any doubts please comment it in the comment section if you feel something is inadequate in this lecture even then comment it in the comment section thank you for watching my lecture thank you